I'm going to talk about how operons control transcription in bacterial cells um, in the next few videos. In this video, I'm just going to kind of do a basic anatomy or the operon structure of a, of a typical operon that you see in a bacterial cell. So what an operon structure actually is, is that it's like a significant difference between bacterial and eukaryotic, uh, eukaryotic gene control lies in the organization of functionally related genes. So many bacterial genes ha that have related functions are clustered and under the control of a single promoter. So if this is our promoter right here in green. And then we have these three genes right here. One, two, three that are all under control of this single promoter. So these genes are often transcribed together into a single mRNA, and then a group of bacterial structural genes that are transcribed together, along with their promoter and any, any additional sequences that control the transcription, is called this operon. So the operon regulates the expression of structural genes by controlling the transcription, which in bacteria is usually the most important level of gene regulation. So right here I've drawn a basic operon structure. So right here we have the promoter, and then you'd actually have a little bit of overlap between the promoter. So let's just draw right here. If we have in green a little bit of overlap between the promoter and what's called the operator right here. So right there is the operator. So I'll explain what the operator is in a second, but I'll label it for you here. Operator. And then here you have your structural genes, so gene 1, 2, and 3, which get transcribed into these mRNA. So this is mRNA here. And then each one of these gets translated into a separate enzyme. And then each one of these enzymes, so if this is a biochemical pathway down here, the products of the mRNA catalyze reactions in a biochemical pathway. So they are catalyzing these intermediate reactions between each one of these processes. And then you have your end product here. And there's a lot of different, there's lots of different products that you could have from lactose to tryptophan, which are the two most common ones, which I'll explain in further videos. But that is essentially what this operon does. So you have these genes that are transcribed from this promoter. And you have gene one, two, and three, which get transcribed into, or translated, or yeah, transcribed into mRNA, which then get translated into these enzymes, which catalyze reactions. Without one of these, then you wouldn't have this reaction here, and your product would stay as this little square uh, molecule here. So you need every single one of these enzymes to make your end product. So what I've drawn right here is the um, repressor protein. So a separate regulator gene with its own promoter encodes a regularity protein. So it could either be a regular, uh, regulatory or repressible or activator enzyme. So let's pretend that this is a repressor enzyme. So right here you have your promoter right here, and then right here you have your regulator. So this is just what gets transcribed. You have transcription into mRNA, and then this gets translated into this protein. And it has a binding site here for DNA, and then a binding site here for some sort of molecule. So what this will do is it'll actually come in, and let's pretend that this is what's called a repressible operator. So some molecule will bind to this section right here, and that's telling this repressor to bind to the operator. So what this does is it stops transcription. So if this thing is bound right here, like this, then if we have, let's do this in pink. If you have a RNA polymerase come in to start transcription, it will not be able to bind because this repressor enzyme will be blocking the transcription site, right? So this, this promoter, or actually I kind of drew this wrong here. This repressor enzyme should be kind of blocking the promoter too. So it's big like that, it's blocking, and then it has a little molecule down here that is bound to it, telling it to stay there, right? So when this molecule becomes less uh, abundant in the cell, it will release, and then this uh, repressor enzyme will re be released from the promoter and the operator, and then RNA polymerase will be able to come in and bind and then start transcription and make these mRNA and eventually these enzymes for this biochemical pathway. 
Another type is called an inducible operon. So that means that this uh, repressor is always bound to this promoter and operon operator. So when a molecule, like lactose is a good example of this, when lactose is created, it will also create this uh, molecule called allolactose, and allolactose will bind to this repressor and release it from the operator. So it will be over here, and then the promoter can come in and make the enzyme that it needs to make. So that's the basic structure of the operon. So in the next videos, I'll talk about the lactose operon and the tryptophan operon and like the differences between uh, negative, positive, inducible, and repressible operons.